Welcome to Answers in Jubilees, produced by The God Culture. I'm going to keep this intro short again. It's time to explore Noah's division of the earth, which he inherited all of it, not just the Middle East, which we've already seen. But he basically divided the earth to his three, and he only had three sons. This video is Japheth. And I'll keep it brief, though more details are in the book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, available free in ebook, and you can purchase it in print on Shopee and Amazon. Shopee Philippines, by the way. Just go to bookofjubilees.org for links. I will read Jubilees and on screen demonstrate this on a map in the first map of the world with notes. Get out your book of Jubilees and follow along. This map is in the maps section and reading from chapter 8. Understand you cannot forget the previous two mappings because this is very obvious when you keep everything in context and understand Noah pronounced a curse on either son who steals territory from their brother for all eternity. He would not have overlapped any territory and we find he did not. These territories remain and they come to us from Noah who was given dominion over all of the earth. It was his inheritance. And he says Yahuwah put these words in his mouth. Therefore, this is actually law. Nations that bleed over these territories today are breaking Noah's curse, breaking Noah's law, and pronounced a curse upon them. Whether they like it or not, and whether any of us like it or not, it's Noah's law, not ours. No wonder they censored this part of Torah. Let's begin. We are continuing in Jubilees chapter 8, verses 25 through 30. However, before reading, do you notice something? There are three sons again. Noah had no other. There aren't, there's no fourth. There's nobody else. None. He divided the earth three ways. That's it. Now, we already know what two of them are. Thus, look at the map. By default, the rest that's not colored in yet, well, that all goes to Japheth. All of it. Notice all of it. I think Alaska's included in that. Hmm, how about that? Anyway, so when we are seeking affirmation, Within these areas of ancient references, which some are lost to history. I mean, this is ancient, ancient geography, guys. This is not easy to reconstruct, and we've spent a lot of time on this because we care about this mapping. We will operate with this in mind because we know already this is Japheth's territory by default. So to not look for those references within his territory, already established his record, would really just be willing ignorance, which is something we do not want to be known for. Of course, we look. However, Noah did not leave this to such process of elimination even, but this full mapping of Japheth confirms this is exactly Japheth's territory in fact. All references within must fit Japheth's territory, period. It's not confirmation bias. It's got to fit Japheth's territory. That's it. It's there because it's within that mapping. Now, we have an illiterate posing as someone he is not on Amazon, supposedly reviewing our book in fraud, trying to sound academic even, and it is complete fraud, and he is no academic. He is a paid Troll. Only here to agitate. Now, he calls this rubbish, yet logic does not. And he is an idiot who can't read especially a map or really even a sentence and comprehend. So, there. It is laughable how inept this guy can be when trying to fumble around a map because he can't read one. He says... Timothy thinks, well, actually, it's our entire team, and we know, and we prove. He always assaults me personally and has committed cyber libel illegally so many times. The report we submitted to the authorities a while ago now is 45 pages long of his infractions, and that just keeps growing. This guy's way out of control. 
you will see him trolling each video. And you will also watch his comments disappear as we catch him and mute constantly. And we'll continue to. We always will. How frustrating it must be to create new usernames over and over only to be shut down as his position really is only ignorance. He reviewed Solomon's Gold Series and three others, admitting he had not actually watched either of the four series, yet he watched a seven-minute recap video on the Lost Tribes, and he knows everything that we don't prove in all four series. That's amazing ESP, evidently. He then reviewed our cover for our book, (laughs) which wasn't actually our cover, very embarrassing, and almost six months before we even published. What an idiot. He then reviewed the book before we even published and before reading it. He then claims he got the print book and pages fell out. I'm sorry, from Amazon? Really? Well, first, what idiot would take that and not return it? I mean, who would accept pages falling out? Yet, There's no record of any returns, so it doesn't work. Amazon's printing is very good, and they don't send books out with pages falling out. That's ridiculous. Now, it turns out he only ordered the (laughs) e-book. He only ordered the e-book. So those e-book pages are falling out on his computer screen? Uh, Really? Is that how that works? What a fraud. Could one be more of a fool? Well, by... Bible definition, that's a perfect match, and we're not going to spend any more time on this guy. The authorities will catch up to him. He finishes in title in fraud. Timothy believes Noah mentions Fairbanks, Alaska. Ha, ha, ha. What a child. He's a paid agitator, just like the other channel of communist illiterates. All began as soon as we started our conferences, and it is so obvious that they're all funded by the same organization. We even place a note on the map. We'll show you that we are not certain of a connection to Fairbanks, Alaska. And there are question marks. No, what does that mean? I don't know what a question mark means. This guy is profoundly illiterate. He can't read, so his profound learning disability impedes him, yet he writes on and on anyway, because he's a paid troll. However, we then show the Farallone Islands off the coast of San Francisco as a likely better option, also with question marks. To this dead reference, this ancient reference in ancient history, very hard to reconstruct at all. As it is right there, though, on the 37th parallel, even with Gadir, Spain, which is the line it follows. And that makes sense. We'll show you. We receive challenges all the time, and we're actually happy to field such. We enjoy uh, debate to a degree. However, personal illegal assaults will not be tolerated, and this fool will be brought to justice. Now, get out your book or ebook, and let's map this final section out so we may all know our ancient geography. And for Japheth came forth the third portion, beyond the river Tina, we know that river, to the north of the outflow of its waters. Now, We covered the River Tina in week two with Shem's territory in detail. This is just the other side of Shem's already noted everything north of this river there and west of it and the Rafa or Earl Mountains as well. Uh, it's, It's all Japheths. I mean, that's what we already determined in Shem's mapping, and this is just confirming it starting on that same border, just as Ham's division starts on that same border on the banks of the Gihon, the coast of Africa. Same thing. You can pause the screen and study the map if you need, uh, because there's a lot of detail there. That's fine. If you want exacts, follow the Don and Volga River system, all of it, including its tributaries. You can follow it to the Sea of Azov. That's the modern name for the Maetis, Maet Sea. That's right there. Very easy to find the Caspian, and all the way up to where one of its tributaries actually meets the Arctic Ocean. Uh, 
A very definitive border. Even R.H. Charles picked up on this and many others. So it's, I mean, this really couldn't be any other river, especially since Tana in Scythian, Tina, uh, is the name that the Scythians called that same river system. So very easy to find, not so hard. And all the way up to where one of its tributaries meets the Arctic Ocean, a very definitive border, and it essentially is the origin of the Continental Divide, between Europe and Asia, or Japheth and Ham, set by Noah. And it extendeth northeasterly to the whole region of Gog, and we know who he is, and to all the country east thereof. East of what? Well, this is identifying the eastern portion of Europe. Notice there is a territory named Gog, though he's not a son of Japheth. So it's not referencing anyone from Japheth there. Gog is a Nephilim. This is not his seat of power, however, in the end times. He migrates. His seat of power migrates with his people who migrated with him or for him, however you want to say it. Where where are we? We're in the Russian steppes and Russia here in these uh, instructions. It just to find that entire territory as Japheth's. Now, even Josephus places Gog in the Russian steppes, so this should not be new to scholarship at all. What we know about Gog, and we cover in detail in our Gog of Magog videos, is that he is a Nephilim, and when he died, physically, he became a principality of darkness somehow. How do we know? Well, it says so in Ezekiel 37 and 38, where he attacks, especially Israel, in the end times. But he's not just attacking Israel. He's attacking the whole world. We'll deal with that in another video. His seat of power, however, is not here. It is actually, according to Ezekiel, in Tubal and Meshach. And Noah defines those as well, and we'll get to that too. We'll address all of that in future videos in this series. And it extendeth northerly to the north. Now he's clarifying the whole region of northern, the northern portion of Europe here, and he continues to. And it extendeth to the mountains of Celt, towards the north. Now we find an ancient reference that the Celts originated in the Alps, therefore that would be their mountain range of origin, especially way back, this is ancient geography, from long before their migrations further west. If you want to skip to the British Isles for that, go ahead. And if it makes you feel good, that that's fine. You can do that. We don't believe it does, but it doesn't matter. And this will be further defined in the grandson's territories that we'll be, we will be covering. So this is going to make more sense even then. But it appears to be jumping ahead, but that's okay. It won't mess up the directions because essentially he's defining Europe here, so it doesn't matter. And towards the Sea of Mauk, now in him, we identified this as the South Atlantic. And here, again, this is the sea next to Gadir, Spain, which is certainly the Atlantic, and also named for Ham's wife, and his territory included the South Atlantic as part of Africa, first named after his wife and eventually rebranded the Ethiopian Sea on many maps all the way up until the 1800s, and all the way back until 450 BC that we found. I'm sure there are more. And it goeth forth to the east of Gadir, that's Cadiz, Spain, as far as the region of the waters of the sea. Now, Noah brilliantly defines the coastline of Europe, beginning with Spain, and then he's going across. In this case, he's, he's heading east, because that's what he's talking about. He's finishing Europe. That's what he's doing there. The land as the boundary of Japheth, basically. In other words, though there are some islands within that will go to Japheth, you'll see the, and not in this, uh, you'll, you'll see it in the grandsons. That's where it specifies certain islands in the Mediterranean do go to Japheth. Um, the Mediterranean waters, however, actually 
have always belonged to, it appears, Ham, because Japheth's border ends at the coastline. Now, this is all of Europe and very specific. All of it is Japheth's. However, the directions do not stop there. And this is the amazing thing. He's already defined Europe. So where is he going now? What's left? Well, from our mapping, you can see what's left. The North America, part of North America is what's left. So could he include that? I mean, is that possible? Well, let's see, because he's about to head west, which means he's crossing that sea to another land we call the Americas. Columbus may not have known as knowledge was lost, but 800-year-old Noah, he knew. Say what? Is that Fairbanks, Alaska? Oh, aren't we just crazy? Well, no, because this area was already defined as Japheth's, but check this out, and we even employ question marks. You know what those mean. And it extendeth until it approacheth the west of Pharaoh. So again, where were we in the directions? Gadir, Spain, all the way on the west coast of Europe. Europe has been set. Noah set the European border there, and he's gone all around Europe at this point. And then he heads west. Now we are on the 37th parallel in modern times is what we would call that. If you draw a line across, that's where it is. And you can follow that through to the Americas exactly exactly where the north and south in the U.S. divide. Hmm, imagine that. Noah divided the United States, and Japheth united them. More on that later. Now, we show the arrows further north because there is so much room on the map, and we have to return back to Europe across the Atlantic, again next. So that's why we did it that way. The arrows are fairly large, but that's on purpose. We want this to be very visual. Pharaoh also means passage in Old Norris, uh, fitting of the Bering Strait, the passage between the two continents, essentially. As well, uh, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. That very well could be because, well, not because Noah mentions Alaska, that'd be a pretty dumb thing to say, that's not what we say, but somewhere there is an ancient reference on the west coast of North America to this Pharaoh. That's what it is. Another ancient testament, the Jubilees could not have been written by a Pharisee, nor in the age of 150 BC, in fact, because these are very ancient directions, far more ancient. Now, the Western world has lost the Americas at, you know, at one point. They even lost a fear at one point. In, in the days, in fact, of 150 BC, those were, they didn't know about those two areas. Uh, they knew of Ophir, but they didn't know where it was specifically. Some of the olden writers in Greek did, but the Romans didn't. They didn't know the route, and they were trying to find it. Uh, the Farallone Islands off the coast of San Francisco are right on the 37th parallel, even with Gadir, Spain. This offers likely the best tie for the word Pharaoh. However, we leave it with question marks, because we have, again, read the note, no definitive track. What we do know is Japheth's territory includes most of North America, as it must. It can't be in Ham's nor Shem's. Also, wait till you see Noah's further definition of this, of five great islands. We'll see that's going to affirm this. None of these directions in being drawn in a vacuum could possibly be understood. You must uh, look at this as if they all tie together because these are directions. It's one great, big, large map. That's what it is. So in context, 
This is the key to this whole reading, as is the whole Bible, in fact. And these agitators have a way of trying to pull out fragments and focus, uh, you know, just on this word or this sentence, and they can't even read a note that's on the same page that says this is not definitive, nor can they even see that there's a question mark after that and that there's another pharaoh, the Pharaoh Islands, on the same page. But see, they're, they're not committed to see because they, they live in a world of willing ignorance. And unfortunately, we find this in modern scholarship far too often. So, from Gadir, Spain, we head west to the west of the next land. We call that North America, and it includes Alaska for certain. The end. And it returneth towards Afarag. Now, that's Africa's west coast. The east coast in these directions was called Afra. So, these are Africa by direction and by name. Again, turning back and now heading east, right back to where we were before, across the Atlantic again, to Europe. Now, Noah repeats and reaffirms Europe as Japheth, and also reaffirms we were not in Europe before when we headed west from the very west of Europe, essentially. And it extendeth easterly to the waters of the Sea of Mi'at. Again, Shems tells us the same, and this is confirmation within Japheth as well. And it extendeth to the region of the river Tina, Tena in a northeasterly direction until it approacheth the boundary of its waters towards the mountain Rafa, which we know, and it turneth round towards the north. Basically, full circle comes and redefines that same border yet again, which was already defined in Shem at least twice, has already been defined now in Japheth at least twice. There's no doubting where the border is. So, in other words, done. This is the east and southeast boundary of Japheth with Shem. Japheth cannot cross it. And it is the continental divide set by Noah in very ancient times. Now this really brings it home. Noah clarifies. Watch what he does here. This is the land which came forth for Japheth and his sons as the portion of his inheritance, which he should possess for himself and his sons, for their generations forever. Now, that's all three now. Forever, forever, forever. Always, still, today. That's included in that. Five great islands and a great land in the north. Now, the funny thing is, is if he cut off at Europe right there, and he only got Europe, as some would try to find a way to make this fit, which it cannot possibly, then it doesn't work because it is a great land, which means it is a large land. Without the North America portion, it's not so large. It's actually rather small. So it's not really great. So even using the word great land there actually tells us much. But what? Five great, meaning largest, islands? Huh? How did Noah even know that, right? Well, he certainly did because look what he does here. And this just is incredible. Of the ten greatest or largest islands on all of Earth, exactly five of the ten just so happen to be in Japheth's territory just identified. There you have it. This is confirmation that Noah indisputably does refer to Alaska. <gasps> what? Yep, he does. And Canada, especially because four of these Five great islands are actually there in Canada. And so without Canada, you don't get the five great islands. And no, you don't call the islands in the Mediterranean great in the scheme of things. They are very small in comparison to the larger islands on Earth. It doesn't make sense. But look at this. Greenland, number one. Baffin, 
uh, number five. That's in Canada. Great Britain, number eight, which proves this is the case really firmly. Victoria Island, Canada, number nine, and Ellesmere Island, Canada, number ten. Five of the ten largest islands on Earth. Wow. Noah was so much smarter than we or any scholar. Why would we ever take their word over his when we have his writing right here? And a final recap, of all three territories, by a definition that is rather difficult to misunderstand. Check this out. But it is cold. That's Japheth's territory. That's what we're talking about here in the north. And it certainly is. And the land of Ham is hot. Well, this is approaching the equator in the southern hemisphere. Yes, it does get cold further south in the southern hemisphere again, but generally this is so clear and there is nothing to show Shem nor Japheth have the right to skip over Ham's border, which is clearly defined across the whole earth. It doesn't work. To then land in islands, uh, say the Falklands, and we won't go there, but the, the islands in the south uh, of South America and even into Antarctica, just because it's cold there, it doesn't work. There's no skipping around in this mapping. You can't see that anywhere. Noah was smarter than that. Ham must include Antarctica based on this mapping. And the land of Shem is neither hot nor cold, but it is a blended cold and heat. A great definition of Asia to the North Pole even. Very cold to very hot. That is a perfect balance that now has come back and reaffirmed everything. That's it. The whole earth, folks. All of it. This cannot be chopped up. It cannot be ridiculed based on one reference as it all flows together and repeats even. And any other assessment requires one to stumble over boundaries and they cannot. We've seen many out there that we haven't seen anyone that understands this because they haven't gotten out a map and mapped it out. And without that, you'll never understand this. This is an accurate rendering of Noah's map. The most ancient map of the world. It is time we restore this geography and understand how the world is supposed to work geographically. Japheth has been encroaching through colonialism, justified even by the church, Catholic church and Protestant sometimes, even illegally, all over the earth, into Ham's and Shem's territories especially. And it is time he is called out for it. It's wrong. And it violates Noah's law, which still stands for his. And he is the only one who had the right to do so. Division of the earth, which he inherited. No one else. We will cover the curse that Noah pronounces on anyone breaking this covenantal law of all of our generations. And unless you are Nephilim, this still applies to you and I. The Nephilim have no territory because they are not supposed to be here at all. So no, they don't get an allotment. Sorry, but they shouldn't exist. So there you have it. Absorb this, study it, and know it because modern academia and Bible scholarship prove themselves illiterate in this very ancient geography. All because... They do not have jubilees, yet they should, but they willingly are ignorant of it, as Second Peter 3 warns. Yah bless to everyone. The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, named by the temple priests in Qumran, as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilee is also known as the Book of Division. As Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, 
demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full test for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes, in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288-page quality paperback has a high-resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.